All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, the big video 190 here with Strange Phenomena of New England in the 17th century. It's actually a, about the Salem Witch Trials, although from that title you'd suspect, oh, it's about, like, you know, the cryptids and folk tales or something. It's definitely got some spooky stuff in it. It's a very important compilation. I'll, I'll get to its content in a moment. Link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Highly recommended for anyone who's interested in, like, the burning times, persecution, moral panics, tie in with that. Uh, second and third links to my books, blogs. I have a couple of other works on Salem uh, and similar topics. One's actually by Cotton Mather. Uh, this particular work is a collection of primary source documents. It was compiled in the middle of the uh, 1800s and 19th century. Um, so it's, it itself is an old work that's compiled of even older works. Now, the most important text is actually fairly short and at the back, and it was the recantation, the apology of the Salem jury. You see, after all the condemned had died or, or been put on trial and, and tortured or whatever, some people died in prison, you know, even though they would have been found not guilty. By the way, many of the accused didn't die. Some people think everyone that got accused of witchcraft was killed. No, it was actually only about, I think, about 10% of the people that were accused and uh, actually ended up dying, and some, again, died in prison. Giles Corey, importantly, they couldn't hang him because he never confessed because he held up well under torture, so they crushed him to death under a bunch of rocks. What a nice way to go. Suffocate the poor man, because they wanted his farm. He prevented, it. essentially, the, the property side of it was they wanted his farmland, uh, the parish wanted it or something, and, and they didn't get it because since he hadn't confessed, they couldn't confiscate the land. See, it's it's partially about land, uh, uh, you know, desire for land ownership. That really is part of the problem. I prefer a fusion for theory, and I talk about this briefly in the foreword, but just as an aside, I don't accept any singular theory with regards to Salem. Some say ergot outbreak, they actually thought they were possessed, they were just hallucinating. Some say it was only about property disputes, that is, one group wanted the other group's land, so they say witchcraft, witchcraft. Some say it was just a, a hysteria, a moral panic in general. I fuse all three. I think it starts with a property dispute, and then you get a moral panic that begins to grow, and ergot and other poisoning happens to seep into it, because, you know, bad weather. Uh, you get an outbreak of essentially people hallucinating. Yes, that certainly adds to the witch hysteria. And then it dies down when you start, you know, I think it was the governor, uh, you know, there was, was accused of witchcraft and he put the kibosh to it. Anyway, uh, this is an important collection. Some of the testimony from the time, uh, letters of correspondence, a list, uh, you know, by Mather, I believe, at the beginning, uh, specifically with regards to certain texts on the uh, subject that had been compiled at the time, and then the apology of the jury at the end. It's, it's a, a beefy work, it's quite in-depth, and I left it largely intact in its Old English form, uh, specifically because you're dealing with primary source documents. The only language that I changed in this were a few such, such badly antiquated terms that nobody would understand them unless they were, like, used to editing stuff from the era, uh, and, and replace them only in such cases where there's an exact, a literal representation of that word. Like, not something that's slightly different, but literally it means exactly the same thing in exactly the same way. It's just a different word is used now. You get that sometimes with English from that era. Very important work. Um, being primary source would be more academic than some of the works on Salem that have been made. Like, some of it's more retrospective. It's like, oh, well, here's what will allude to the testimony and give a bunch of opinion. This one is very, there's very little that the initial editor and compiler actually did, other than create a foreword. Uh, so it's a good work, and it's, it's right down my alley, especially in this particular era, when you've got our own moral panics and witch hunts going on right now. Like, oh, this person's a Russian pawn, that person's, you know, a Nazi or, or hateful or something. Uh, we need to censor, we need to persecute, to platform. It's basically the same thing. It's basically the same as a bunch of people getting high on tainted rye and seeing demons and shit. But, I mean, some of these tales are totally fantastical, and they had to, if, if it's not somebody lying in their testimony, or just making shit up for entertainment's sake, it had to have been the result of hallucinations. It had to, they were smoking henbane or something like that, or, or again, they ingested ergot, or maybe they got some detura by mistake. Because they're talking about women, you know, who are floating 20, 30 feet through the air and flying like an eagle, and specters and, and strange animals appearing in the woods, and there's a portent of doom, and demons, and people speaking in tongues. And actually, some of the testimony actually informs, like, the, the sort of uh, vision that you get during The Exorcist. Like, if you've watched the movie, the swelling of the throat, floating, again, speaking in Latin or other unfamiliar tongues and things of that nature, some of which don't regularly appear before, sort of, the Salem and Burning Times era. 
really even with the earlier witch hysterias that you get you don't get some of that it's it's a little bit different uh, if you read some of the earlier works by that period it's like you know witches do all sorts of crazy things and you've got animal familiars and they would occasionally put animals on trial i don't think that happened in salem but it happened in the european <laughs> witch trial uh, they would put, you know, it's it's a sort of like when the Pope disinterred his predecessor and put him on trial and condemned his skeleton. Interesting times people lived in back then. There was a different understanding of reality. So this is an excellent work. This is one of the highly recommended works that I had fun actually reading while I was editing, sort of going back through it. Again, link in the description of my edition of this work is, uh, is on Amazon. The description, second and third links to my books, blogs. There are other works on sort of the witch hysteria, Salem, and things of that nature. That's about all. Peace out.